Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. If you are rebuilding an engine like I am here and you are switching from a flat tappet cam to a roller cam, you should change a couple things. You're gonna need, you should change the valve springs, the retainers, and the keys. And there are very specific reasons for that. Also, if you are buying a set of used heads, it's very important to understand that those heads come off a flat tappet engine or a roller engine. If you don't know which one they came off and you take a flat tappet head and put it on a roller cam, or if you take a roller uh, head and put on a flat tappet engine, it could have catastrophic results. The reason why you should change the valve springs is because of kinetic energy. And it all boils down to this one formula. The formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared, where m stands for the mass of the object, which is measured in a unit called slugs, and v is the velocity of the object squared. What that basically means is the heavier an object is, the more energy you have to put into it to get it moving, and the more energy it takes to stop it from moving. So imagine if you were standing 10 feet away from you and I toss you a basketball going five miles an hour. You're just gonna stand there and catch it, right? Now imagine I take a 15 or 16 pound bowling ball and you're still standing 10 feet away. In order for me to get it to fifth, uh, the five miles an hour, I'm gonna have to put considerably more effort into throwing a bowling ball. And when you see it coming and you know it weighs 15 or 16 pounds, you're gonna brace yourself and you're gonna catch it and you gotta absorb more of that energy. So the kinetic energy is simply the amount of energy put into something to get it into motion. And when it's in motion, how much energy is in that object. Now think about that same concept with the lifters. We have the flat tappet lifter and the roller lifter. The difference in weight, the flat tappet lifter weighs 109 grams. The pair of roller lifters weigh 331 grams or roughly 160 a piece. That's an increase of over 49%. So your engine will be taking a lifter like this, doesn't take much to throw it, this is like the basketball, and then you put in the hydraulic lifters or the rollers, these are heavier. This is like throwing a bowling ball. So you have more energy in motion. That energy in motion requires the spring on top of the valve, on top of the uh, head, to absorb more energy. So in order for a roller head or roller cam to work properly, it has to be able to absorb more energy. And the way that's accomplished is with a heavier spring. Now, depending on the engine, what you're using it for, there's real, I can't really give you how much more you need to change your springs to but you always follow the manufacturer's instructions. It's usually in a range of 10, it can be up to 100%, because the spring pressure for a roller can be up to 7, 800, where flat tappets usually don't go over 390. So it's a huge range, so we can't go over that, but we can look at the, the springs, understand the differences, and why you need to have different retainers on top of the springs and different keys. Taking the springs off is fairly simple. I have a shaft mounted spring compressing tool. This is meant to be used with the heads on the engine, but it's very easy to do with the heads off the engine. You just clamp the head down to a, uh, a bench top. And when you compress the spring, the keeper in there is gonna be a little tight. So you get this centered and you compress it. And as you're compressing it, you tap it. And it'll break loose. Have a magnet with you. And a magnet, you can pull out the keys one at a time. That's the key. And then when you release the spring and the tool, and the spring comes off just like that. Not only do you have a heavier lifter with the roller that is going to be moving and have more energy put into it, because of the profile on a roller cam, the valve is going to be open quicker or the lifter is going to be thrown up much faster because the angle on the roller cam is much more aggressive than a flat tappet. So when the roller engine 
is taking a lifter, a heavier lifter, lifting it up faster. It's the equivalent of taking that bowling ball and throwing it faster. So you have a faster mass, you're putting more energy into it, more kinetic energy has got to be absorbed by the spring, and with that kinetic energy is you need a stronger spring to hold that lifter down against the camshaft, and if you don't, you will get valve float at the top. It, the, the lifter will be thrown up in the air and it'll continue in motion and it won't be able to hold, the spring isn't strong enough, it won't hold down against the lifter and you'll get valve float at high RPMs. Like the other, if you go the other way, if you have the, uh, if you have the flat tappet, if you put a roller head on a flat tappet engine and it has significantly higher spring rate uh, on, the, on the springs, it's going to demolish the flat tappet because it's going to have too much spring force, it's going to push it against the camshaft and it's going to wipe out the lifter. Now I always say follow the manufacturer's recommendations. I have the flat tappet and the roller cam both from Comp, both with very similar lift, very similar duration. However, when I look at the recommendation for the spring seat pressure, it's identical for both cams at 370. Of course the manufacturer wants you to be easy on their cam so you don't destroy it but still get good performance out of it. However, when you go to the TrickFlow website and you're ordering cylinder heads, these are the 240cc heads here, and there's two different heads you could buy. You either buy a flat tappet or a roller head. And the difference is pretty significant. The flat tappet head is going to come with springs that have a 391 seat pressure, and the roller heads are going to come with springs that have a 427 inch pound seat pressure. That's like a 9% difference. Now the next thing you have to change with the springs are the retainers on top and the keys that hold the springs in place. Because a flat tappet engine is going to have a seven degree angle on the keys inside the retainer. When you increase the spring force, and not only the spring force, but since the ramp closing the valve is more aggressive on a roller, the valve is going to slam shut and when that slams shut, it's going to put more pressure on the valve tip, the, the stem, the key, and the retainer. So on a roller cam or roller engine, you're going to go from a 7 degree to a 10 degree key and retainer to hold that. And it, the, answer, the, the, the logic for it is pretty simple if you think about it. I have a 7 degree angle on my key, and all of a sudden I'm slamming, I'm putting more pressure on the key. As, it's, as the valve is shutting, so you got more pressure. And in order to hold all of that energy back, I need to take that angle, open it up three more degrees, just to make sure you don't get pound out on the valve. And what, what will happen is, if you buy a set of heads that are used, and they're flat tappet heads, you put it on a roller engine, and they have seven degree keys in there, what could happen is, or if you change the springs, and you have the seven degree, if you don't change those retainers, what will happen is, as the valve is slamming shut, that angle can start to go like this. It'll start to wear on the key, and the keys won't be able to hold back that force anymore. It's pounding out the metal. It'll start to cold form it over time, and eventually, if they go far enough, the, the retainer will slip off and you drop a valve. Now here's what the difference looks like between the keys. The key on the left is the 7 degree key, and the key on the right is the 10 degree key. You can see the 10 degree key is a bit more beefy than the 7 degree. With the 10 degree key, you're also going to need a retainer, or the retainer that sits on top of the spring, so the angle inside the retainer is also going to be 10 degrees. You can't mix them up. So if you are changing your camshaft from a flat tap to a roller, or if you're buying used cylinder heads, you have to know what the valve springs are so they match. If you have a, uh, you're going from the flat tap to the roller, you need more spring force to hold those springs closed and close them as fast as they can on the downside. And you also need to make sure you change the keys from a seven degree to a 10 degree for a roller so that the valve is held in place and it doesn't pound in the seven degree and blow off the retainer and drop a valve. That's basically the things that you need to consider when you're changing your camshaft and don't think you can simply change from a flat tappet to a roller and just throw new lifters and push rods in there you'll be okay. The springs are the, uh, let's say the weak component or the critical component in that chain or in the valve train because that controls how fast the valves will be 
shut when the can goes around. So the more aggressive the angle on the roller, you need a much higher spring force to push that spring down, especially with the inertia coming up, the lifter is heavier, the roller lifter is heavier, so it's being pushed up faster. You have to stop, stop more of that velocity and push it down. That's why you need a higher spring force, and that higher spring force and speed requires the higher angle on the key. Keep that in mind, I hope that helps you. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe because we're finishing putting this, I'm finishing putting it together, and as I go along, there are some other tweaks we'll make to this engine, and uh, we're almost done, almost ready to dyno tune it. Thanks for stopping by Peace Garage.